Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the 2018 Funding Round webinar. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration of the Project Performance Assessment Tool. Um, here with us today, um, my name is Adrian Retz. I'll be your moderator. With us as well is Garrett Ballard Rosa, the Funding Round Manager, Jose Luis Casas, uh, the Project Delivery Manager, and Jeannie Hong, who will be helping demonstrate the PPA tool. Uh, before we get started, just want to let you all know that you all are muted. So if you do have a question, please type that into the question box. Um, we will stop probably midway through the webinar to address questions, but you will have plenty of time at the end of the webinar uh, to ask your questions. And we will be providing all of the team members' contact information so you can follow up with them individually, as well as the SACOG website. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the SACOG website following the conclusion of the webinar today. You will also be receiving a, uh, a recording of the webinar in email. So again, please send your questions via the chat box. And we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to turn it over to Garrett. Thanks so much, Adrian, and thank you for joining us on the webinar. Uh, three main purposes in this webinar, to talk about uh, the call for projects and the two large programs, to talk about the funding round from the delivery standpoint, and then the main point, which we'll get to very quickly, is this project performance assessment tool, what it means, how to use it, what documentation we put together. So as a reminder, the community design program and the regional program, the two largest competitive portions of the SACOG 2018 funding round, are both live, both with call for projects open right now. Community designs applications are due June 29th, and the regional program's applications are due uh, July 19th. Really quickly, just in case you're not familiar with our website, I'm going to show you where these uh, materials live. So I'm on uh, the SACOG website right now, SACOG.org. If you go to Funding, Regional Funding uh, Programs, this is the main landing page for all of our various programs. If you're curious about more information about community design, you click on the Community Design tab. Here you'll find all the information. For example, uh, Greg Chu, the, the uh, lead of community design programs, having a conference call today at 1. Like I said, the, uh, the applications are due uh, later in June, and the application materials are here themselves. Likewise, for the regional program, which as a reminder is a uh, merger of the prior regional local and bicycle pedestrian program um, into a single program here for the 2018 round. Uh, like I said, applications are due July 19th. Here, this link, you can either find it by clicking here or on this pod here is all the materials for the regional program application. I would direct people to look, if you haven't already, at the, the guidelines themselves as a good starting point for the regional program, where it um, tells you all the information you need to know, provides some evaluation uh, guidance, and also a, a walkthrough of the PPA tool. So like I said, just a reminder about uh, the two uh, programs that they are live, um, and this is how you find the application material. Hopefully most of you already know that, but I just want to give that, that context in case you didn't. What I'm going to do now is turn it back over to my colleague, Jose Caceres, Jose Luis Caceres, um, to talk through the second part of the agenda, really the funding round from the standpoint of the delivery. Jail? Thank you, Garrett. Hi, everyone. Uh, the two important takeaways I want everyone to get from this brief presentation is that successful applicants can start work as early as February 2019. And by start work, I mean you can submit paperwork to the federal government, to Caltrans, and they can approve that federal paperwork February 1st, 2019. And with that approval, that gives you permission to start federally reimbursable work. Um, that's pretty fast. That would be two months right after the funding round. And the reason I want people to understand this particular point is when we program dollars to successful applicants, those funds are going to be spread out across several years out into the future. Um, and some sponsors may look at those years and think, what is my money doing way out there? Um, and I will go into how we're going to get you your money sooner. But the takeaway is if you are ready to start right away, uh, we will help you start right away. So let me uh, just go into what that looks like visually. These are the pro these boxes each represent projects programmed in our short range list of projects, the, Mo the Metropolitan Transportation Improvement Program. We've got projects in 2019, projects in 2020, projects in 2021, and in 2022. And we also, there's other projects, I'll get to those in a bit. 
if you receive funding, odds are your funds won't be programmed. And the earliest year you'll see your funds programmed in will be 2020. Um, there we might be able to fit some funds in 2019. Uh, so the reason is we've already decided from prior funding rounds how to program dollars, uh, and 2019 is all full. But you would think that every project in 2019 will come in and request its funds. It doesn't happen like that. Nearly a third of them uh, do not, and that's because of delays in environmental, right-of-way, uh, various issues. Uh, SACOG does not punish these agencies. We actually plan on some amount of delivery failure. And so starting February of every year, we have a free-for-all. That's where we invite projects in future years. So in the year 2019, future years would be 2020, 2021, and 2022, to come in and use that space. Um, we save the we save the space for them up until February 1st. So if you have a 2019 project, you're you're tier one, you're first in line. But come February 1st, projects that have funding in other years get to move forward. We also have another tier. Uh, we call it tier two. That's after May 1st. After May 1st, if projects programmed in those years haven't used up delivery, we will try other creative ideas in order to get all our delivery. That means all of our CMAC and RSTP funds in our region obligated. Many of this is old news for folks, but I, I just want people to understand that when you get money, no matter what year you're programmed in, you can come in in 2019. And there's a third part to this, and that's uh, projects that fail to deliver in, in a given year, they don't automatically move into the first of the line for the next year. We have to put them wherever we have space, but that's okay, because if you recall, come February 1st, they get to move in again. So if you remember anything, it's that if you have a project and you're wondering how soon you can get your money, the answer is February 1st. And to get it February 1st, you would be submitting your paperwork based on our committee recommendation that would come out in early December. Uh, final little bit of information is, although we've been talking about the regional program, there are three, or, uh, three major funds that make it up. Congestion Mitigation Air Quality, Regional Service Transportation Program, and the State Transportation Improvement Program. Those acronyms are CMAC, RSTP, and SIP. CMAC is what we're particularly interested in uh, getting encumbered right away. In 2019, we're expecting a CMAC rescission. Uh, RSTP also looking uh, to get those programmed right away. If you get STIP funds, um, your STIP funds will be programmed in a later year. STIP funds don't get to play by these same rules of uh, advancing in any year that they want. So we need to be careful that when we program your STIP dollars, that the year we programmed it in, that's the actual year you plan on delivering. Uh, I will take any questions at this point. Uh, thanks, Jose Luis. Um, great point. So let's just take a brief pause here where you can type your questions into the question box for Jose Luis. Just want to remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the SACOG website. And Jose Luis's uh, contact information is available at the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions, you are available to reach out to him directly. So with that, we'll take um, a brief pause while you type in your questions into the question box. Okay, continue to type in your questions. So Jose Luis, will available funds be programmed into the MTIP as soon as January 2019 so that we can move forward as soon as February 2019? Uh, absolutely, so this funding round, Garrett, remind me how many million we're giving out just in the region, or total? So 92 million in the regional program, 16 million in community design are the two main buckets. To program that much money into our TIP, uh, we would have a hard time doing that through an administrative modification. But we can program select projects that we know are indeed going to be ready to go. So if you're in your application you're telling us you're ready to go, or in subsequent email you tell me, hey, looks like my project's doing pretty well, I'd like to come in. I can program your select project through an administrative modification. Uh, not just January, I could program it the day after our board meeting in December. That way uh, there's nothing holding you up to getting your paperwork approved by the state and the Fed. Is that my only question? Yeah, um, continue to type your questions in for Jose Luis. He will be here for the remainder of the webinar. Uh, so we see another one coming in. Will there be an opportunity to exchange uh, RSTP funds for CMAC funds if appropriate? I'm going to give the short answer, which is yes. And the longer answer is 
That sounds intriguing. I'd like to hear what particular project and the situation, the details. You can uh, welcome to talk with me at, offline about it. Generally speaking, those are two different funds with two different types of eligibility. Uh, but SACOG, we pull all of our funds together, CMAC and RCP. Our goal is to use CMAC first uh, because that has the more, more strict eligibility. So if you're trying to use CMAC instead of RCP, well, the answer is usually going to be fine, but we have to make sure that your project is indeed eligible. That means it has emission benefits and so on. Charlie, if you'd uh, like to follow up with me offline, I'd be happy to chat with you. Okay, great. So with that, we'll uh, kick it over back to Garrett. Again, if you have any additional questions for Jose Luis, feel free to continue to type them into the question box um, or reach out to him directly. His email will be available at the end of the webinar. Great. Thanks, Adrian, and thanks, Jose Luis. So now onto the main part of the webinar, which is the Project Performance Assessment, or PPA, tool. We very much recognize this is a new part of the funding round, uh, so we want to spend the, the majority of the webinar talking about the tool, uh, the documentation and materials we've put together to help applicants understand the tool and do a live demo actually of the tool and how it works. So as a reminder, uh, and I'll show you this in a, in a second, the, the tool is an online tool and it lives on the SACOG webpage. So when you get to that funding round webpage I showed you, uh, there will be plenty of opportunities and links to get to the tool. We've put together some documentation and some evaluation criteria. You might remember in my first part of the agenda, I was talking about the guidelines for the regional program and really encouraging applica applicants to start there. Section two of the guidelines is a walkthrough, how to apply to the regional program, including what I'm about to show you, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to use the PPA tool. So that's already included in the section two of the guidelines. And then section three is the evaluation criteria. How do we use the tool as part of the overall evaluation of projects which, and to emphasize, the PPA tool is just one component of the project's overall evaluation. And then finally, uh, when I show you the PPA tool itself, we've also put together the more technical documentation. We understand that it's a technical document, but if you're curious where the data comes from, it's, you know, it's source, it's year, so, um, and how the, how the measures are calculated, we do have that technical documentation. So just to point out that we do have these resources available for you now. Something we plan to do um, after this is compile all the questions we get on this webinar as well as some of the questions we've been receiving already and do an FAQ that we'll also post in conjunction with this webinar just as a further, um, some further resources for the, um, for the applicants. So let me turn back now to uh, SACOG's webpage and again walk you through the tool itself. Again, here I'm on the SACOG homepage, SACOG.org. If I go to the regional funding programs, uh, there is a link right here to the PPA tool. There's also various other ways to go through it. Um, I'll show you the, the, the way to go through it for the regional program. Regional program. And then if I click on the application materials, again, the project performance assessment table, it leads me to the project performance assessment page, which gives me just a, sort of the basic information about the tool, how it's going to be used in the regional program, how it's going to be used in the community design program, some documentation about uh, a working group in 2017 that helped sort of early on sort of think through these ideas. And again, if I simply click here, it will lead me to the online tool. The first point I want to make about this project, or about this tool, is that it's a required component for all uh, applications uh, coming through the regional program. The one exception is transit uh, equipment and transit maintenance, so vehicles, uh, that aren't really tied to a specific geography. In those instances, we're putting together a separate data tool that's going to be aligned with the TAM, or Transit Asset Management Plan. Uh, so this is a required component of all uh, applications moving to the regional program, except if you're a transit vehicle um, or equipment project. The, the application sort of gives you a bit more sort of documentation about how to um, determine which one you are. And then, of course, if you have questions about that, please reach out to any of us uh, to get some clarification. So what this tool does, it gives you sort of the, the summary data that's going to be used as part of the application. We, what we're trying to do with this is give an apples to apples comparison about many different types of projects. We very much recognize this is a diverse region. Um, with different projects, different project types, different communities. And in the regional program, which is a flexible program by design, what we've been trying to do is um, make, a, make, a, uh, make a tool that sort of recognizes the diversity of the region. So the first thing you'll see when you open up the tool is just a list of some layers that are in, that are in the, some data layers in the tool, just to give you an, an understanding of some of the things that we're, we're bringing into the tool. 
But really what you want to do first is click on that sort of uh, arrow button on the green tagline. I should mention too, on the far left of the tool there is a walkthrough of what we're about to do. And again, this walkthrough is also in section two of the uh, guidelines. So uh, Jeannie, why don't you scroll into uh, sort of the Placer County Roseville area. Just, uh, we're putting together just a hypothetical project um, just to recognize um, a demonstration of the tool. Um, and just outside of the four counties, just because our, our funding round is four counties. Um, and I uh, just want to just show you, a, you know, a, a test project, not saying anything about the project, just a completely hypothetical example outside of the four counties about how this tool works. So you start by actually just scrolling uh, to your, the location of your project. And then what you do is you identify the length of your project and you draw a line to demonstrate your project. So here we go. We're drawing a line here in Placer County on Sunrise. Um, there are different sort of line tools you could use. For example, if you're, uh, you know, the one that Jeannie just showed you is if your project is a straight line. If your project is uh, more curvy, you can use a tool on the far right. And the, pro um, the, the, the line tool in the middle is um, if you need to zoom in into your project um, to really be specific about its scope, you can use that tool to also pan while you're drawing your, your project line. I just want to emphasize it's really important to be specific about where your project lies. Um, and that, you know, the, the data is very um, sensitive to the existing conditions. So you want to make sure that you're actually um, inputting your, your project where it is. So the next step is just to put in your project name, so webinar example or whatever. Um, something that uh, we found in beta testing, so thanks for the beta tester users, both internal and external, is please don't use weird characters in the project name. So no commas. Right. No slashes. Yeah. Um, because it will not um, read correctly in the output table. So again, no commas, no slashes, no underscores, just, you know, call it something simple, you know, Main Street Rehab, you know, whatever that project is, but don't do Main Street slash city of example or underscore this or comma, just, um, and if you ever have any issues, just try doing a just very simple name in the project um, name. The next is to identify what project you are. So let's just say this is a maintenance and rehabilitation project. Again, this is just a completely hypothetical example. The next point is to type in your jurisdiction. So again, this is a take hog example thing. These final three uh, fields are actually user input fields. We are asking you to input the data here. You can't leave them blank. Uh, you can put zeros in. Correct. So uh, I'll give you a, a brief summary about this. And again, there, if you read the application itself, um, there's a bit more material on this. Really, uh, what we're asking is the tool provide uh, the, the baseline data that we'll be using as part of the performance assessment. There are a couple indicators that we ask the project sponsor to provide, but only if they are selecting the relevant performance criteria. If you'll recall the past webinar, we talked about the regional program and its seven performance outcomes that we use in that program. We talked about how the applicant selects three of those seven and are valid on those three of the seven. So you choose the three that you think speak best to your project. So it may be that the outcomes you uh, select have nothing to do with maintenance or multimodal. So if that's the case, we don't need to know the you know, pavement condition uh, score if your project isn't about maintenance. So if you're not a maintenance project, you can put zero in the PCI field. But if it is a maintenance project, we do ask for the PCI. Likewise, um, vehicle speed and AADT um, are to help sort of contextualize the facility. So if you're applying under outcome three, which is the multimodal outcome, or outcome seven, we need to know the um, AADT. And if you're applying under vehicle speed, uh, which we're saying is design speed or speed limit, your best guess at that, um, we, we need to know that. So again, um, the, the, when you have the application in front of you, it talks about the seven performance outcomes and their numbers. We ask you to select uh, three of the seven. If you do happen to select outcome three or outcome seven, you do need to put the values in here. If you're not selecting any of those outcomes, you can just hit zero. So um, we're going to, uh, now that we've input all of the uh, fields into it, we're just going to hit execute, and we're going to let the, the um, tool populate. It will take a few minutes to run all the data. So while that's happening, um, if you can please be typing in any of your questions. Um, we'll start fielding questions of just the, the nuts and bolts of the tool itself after this thing populates. And then also recognize that the final point that we'll cover, and we'll spend a good amount of time in it, is sort of the evaluation criteria. So we'll talk about right now 
how the tool works, and then we'll, we'll pivot towards actually sort of what it means now that you have a data table. Okay, thanks for typing in your questions. So we have a question, Garrett, that uh, asks, does jurisdiction mean project sponsor slash applicant, or does it mean the area we serve? Right, so this would be the, the project sponsor. We're just trying to tie this PPA tool to the application itself. Great, and um, that uh, information could be found in the instructions, correct? correct? Great. Okay, so continue to type in your questions. We'll leave just a brief moment to ask any questions about the functionality of the tool before we continue on with the demonstration. So you'll see that we've now, um, on the tool's created an Excel file, and it's created this link. So Jeannie, if you'll open up that link that the tool just created. So it will be downloadable. If you have Excel already on your computer and open, it will open straight into Excel. So here is the, uh, the summary table of the tool. The, the first thing um, we should emphasize is um, for some of you, the tool, when you run it, when you open up this uh, link, it will be blank. And that's because you need to click Enable Editing to actually see the output. So we tried to highlight that here, um, but just to emphasize, once you open up the link, if you don't see anything, click Enable Editing, and that will let Excel do all the, the um, formula calculations it needs to do to, to create the actual outputs. Um, let me talk a, a briefly about the summary table itself, and then we'll take any questions on that, and then pivot to the last part we want to talk about, which is sort of what all this data means and how it's going to be used, because we recognize that it is just a lot of data. The first thing to emphasize is this is the summary table that we talk about for the PPA tool, this first page right here. Um, when you submit the physical copy of your application, all we need is the summary table, this first thing on the, you see on the screen. We don't need all of these you know, supporting tabs here. But we ask when you submit the electronic version of it, the email version, that you do attach this as an Excel um, attachment, including all the tabs. So don't just attach this table and attach all the backup data as well. What the, what the PPA tool does is it produce, produces some metrics, um, some numeric values for each outcome. So you can see column A here is the seven performance outcomes we talked about. Reduce VMT, reduce congestion, increase multimodal, support the economy, freight goods movement, safety and security, and maintenance. And we also have a cross-cutting outcome around equity. So those are the seven performance outcomes that the program uses, the regional program. What we've done um, is create a numeric metrics for each of those outcomes. So what the tool does is it reports three or four, depending on the um, outcome, metrics by, uh, by outcome for your project. And really the most important thing to emphasize is sort of a, the evaluation criteria um, is a stronger score, uh, we really look at your project in compared to its community type average. So I'm going to pull up really quickly a, a summary guidance material we put together that is, should be used as a companion to that PPA table we just produced. Okay, so here, and again, this is also in the guidelines, it's also on the PPA uh, tool itself, if you scroll to the far left, there's a link to this, is the summary of uh, the sort of metrics, the average metrics um, by place type average. What we did is we ran hundreds of projects in our current plan by community place type. And again, in our plan, we use the, the, the classification of established communities, centers and corridors, developing communities, rural residential, and agricultural and other communities. So really projects are going to be compared to those of a similar place type. And we've given the numeric average of each score. 
The next, so that's the first really, really important point I want to emphasize, is that projects are compared to those of similar place type. The next is that a supportive score or a stronger score is a, a project that generally has a score higher than its community um, type average. The exception to that is VMT, vehicle miles traveled, is you want to have a lower VMT than your community type average. So again, that's a little bit of a, you know, hopefully you get your head around it. It takes a, a, a few minutes, but generally you want to be higher, but VMT is the exception you want to be lower. And so you see that in column C about sort of the, the evaluation sort of criteria and guidance about um, the, what makes a more supportive score based on that outcome. And if you're looking at this column C, you'll also see a few ones that just are sort of context. That AADT and design speed, speed limit I talked about, um, you're not going to get a numeric score around that. That's just more some sort of contextual information using the multimodal outcome to talk through um, if, the, if the sort of design features you're putting forward make sense given the existing um, conditions. And again, it's not like you get a, if you have high ADT and high speed limit, you get a bad score. It's just sort of a contextual um, part of it. So again, I really want to emphasize this summary table, which again is in the guidelines, which is on the PPA tool on the far left at the very bottom if you scroll there, is a key piece to help sort of hopefully um, get this all taken together because we've heard some comments about, you know, I, I'm able to run the tool, I'm able to put together this table, and then I just see this, this wave of data and it's hard to understand what it means. Use this as a starting point, you know, to demonstrate a supportive score is usually higher except for the VMT and to help you navigate um, what's your uh, community type you're being compared against. So now let's move back to the actually the, the um, one we just produced here. So now we see here are the numeric values, and here it's being compared to its community type. And so this is just uh, one of the, this is just the way we use the PPA tool to compare your project score to community type average. Uh, here the, the tool itself, the table you're going to attach to us, does just report the summary data for all seven performance outcomes. Again, in the application, you are going to be asked just to select three you're only going to be evaluated on the three you select. It was just easier just to have the tool report all seven and then the application we can just condense it down to the three you select uh, instead of the other way around. So again, even though what you can do beforehand, before the application period is due, is use this tool as a, as a, guide, a guidepost maybe to help you think through what might be some of the more sort of compelling performance outcomes you can choose. Um, but again, you only choose three, you only be evaluated on the three that you select. And I guess the, the last thing I'll sort of emphasize is this is, you know, a numeric tool. We put a lot of work in the data behind it and the metrics it reports, and we're excited about um, its application in the funding round. But, and we hope, you know, the goal is to make our, our round more streamlined. We hope this reduces the data burden on local applicants. So this tool in upon itself is all the data that you need to apply to the regional program, the largest portion of our round. But of course, we recognize that you have your own um, wealth of data, your own analyses, your own understanding of the local project. So we encourage in the application itself to complement, to bring forward any other data that you have uh, in addition to the PPA. And also, really importantly, you're also going to need to write the narrative part of it, make the compelling case. So to recognize that this is the PPA, the, the data is just one part of the project's overall evaluation. You'll have opportunities in the application, in responding to the application, to bring in your own data and to also make the compelling case um, just from the narrative side of things about why, the, why this project um, is a high priority for community and helps sort of realize the performance outcome visions and goals that we have in our long-range plan that we're trying to implement um, through this funding round. So I'm going to pause there. That's really what we wanted to cover. I know it's a lot of information taken. Really to emphasize the guidelines, the uh, documentation, and the walkthrough. Uh, and to call attention to, we'll probably put together, we will put together an FAQ based on the questions here that we received to date on the tool. But the goal is to have a, a sort of apples to apples data comparison for all projects moving through the round. Um, to use that as one part of the, the sort of performance evaluation of the um, all, all projects moving through the round, but it's not the end all be all. So I'll pause now. I'm, I imagine there'll be some questions. We'll, we'll, we'll pause for maybe a few minutes and, and see the questions coming through the chat box.
Okay, thank you so much for typing your questions. Continue to do so. Garrett's going to go ahead and address some of these. Um, so the first question is, can we enter the PCI, ADT, and speed limit even if we may not need them? Will it do any harm? Yeah, thanks for the question. It won't do any harm. Uh, again, it's, you know, the, the tool spits out all seven outcomes just because that was the easiest technically, but in the application, you select the three performance outcomes you want to be evaluated on. So if you select three that happen to not have anything to do with maintenance or multimodal, that's not something that is part of your application. It just, the tool gets condensed down just to the three. So, you know, you need to put something in those boxes. If you are making the claim for maintenance or multimodal, you need to put in the actual values. If not, it's probably easier just to put zeros in, just as a flag of saying, um, you know, this isn't an outcome we want to be evaluated on. Great. Thanks, Garrett. Another question we got asked is, where is the farm to market and agricultural access outcome? Okay, so the, it's, uh, the farm to market and agricultural sort of outcomes are part of every performance outcome. So I'll draw attention in particular to outcome number four, support the economy. You'll see two um, indicators here, uh, ag acres and change in ag acres. When you go into the application itself, if you select the um, support economy outcome, you have the choice to either talk about accessibility or talk about the agricultural economy. So here's one way that, that we bring in sort of the rocks or rural urban connections and agricultural work. So what we're saying in this indicator is if you're serving agricultural community and those um, acres are um, forecast to stay in agriculture, you know, that's a, that's a compelling case for agriculture. The next part is in freight as well. Uh, that we, If you go into the documentation, there's this indicator here about present industrial jobs. That's a, it's a larger catch-all that also includes agricultural jobs. So a project that has a lot of um, sort of, you know, heavier commercial traffic serving the agricultural economy, also um, we speak to that in the performance outcome around freight. So those are two ways that we've talked about the agricultural economy in the performance outcomes uh, through the, the data itself and then asking projects in the narrative side of things to complement the data with, with its own compelling case. Great. Another question, when will the tool uh, that evaluates transit equipment and maintenance projects be available? So that tool is forthcoming. Um, what we want to do is, tr is tie it to the transit asset management plan, the TAM plan, and try to, you know, not have you, the transit providers, do two separate data pools. So it will definitely, uh, I don't have a specific date yet. Um, I'm moving back in with my transit team. We're, we're, in, we're in the works on that. Uh, but but the, the reason for delaying releasing it is because we don't want to ask you this right now and then come back a bit later and ask you for some of similar things through the TAM plan. So that's forthcoming. We'll have it at, out far in advance of the round, um, but I don't have a specific date yet on the, the transit sort of equ equivalent to this PPA tool. Great. And uh, perhaps we could suggest the SACOG.org website to stay updated on um, dates, releases, and information that would be relevant to the release of that tool. Yeah, exactly. Great point, Adrian. Great. So um, let's just leave about 30 more seconds for you to type in your questions about the tool before we move on. Okay, we have a few more questions. Where is the summary guidance document? Okay, I'll show you again on the website. So I'm going back to here. This is just the tool itself. I'm going to close it out. I'm going again from the website. So if we go to funding, regional funding programs. If I go to um, the project performance assessment tool, each program, so here's the regional program. Here's the PPA documentation for the regional program. And then here's the PPA documentation for the community design program. That's the very technical document. If you're, worried, if you're concerned or curious, I should say, about what's the data, where does it come from, how it's being used, this is the technical documentation. If you're more curious about sort of its use in the regional program, I'll show you that right now. So I'm going back to if the internet will work. 
try that one more time, the regional program page. As part of the application materials, again, I, I call attention to the guidelines. The guidelines are the, the catch-all sort of what you need to know for the program itself. The first part of the guidelines are just the basic part of the, the regional program. The second uh, is the walkthrough that I just showed you about how to, how to do the tool, um, you know, the step-by-step. -step. And then the third part is the evaluation criteria. What do these scores mean and how they get translated into sort of a high, medium, low? So these guidelines, especially part three, the evaluation criteria, uh, is that summary document. Great. Thanks, Garrett. So we have another question coming in. <clears throat> Presumably, the more supportive a score is, the more likely a project is to be funded. But how do we know how our projects compare to projects in other place types? Are there any general guidelines about what is more competitive beyond just being lower or higher supportive scores? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, again, the, the PPA score is just one part of the project's overall evaluation. Uh, we, we do say as general guidance that, you know, you, you should have some, you know, performance outcomes that have a, a PPA sort of corollary. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that every metric within each outcome you really hit on. So I think one is, you know, with the guidance we give is uh, look for your place type average, but also recognize that every single project that comes through the round is better than its place type average. There still needs to be that comparison of projects against each other in the round. We can't give any guidance on that yet because we just don't, know, you know, we haven't done the PPA and all projects moving through the round. So I think a, 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 a guidance I would offer is really tying sort of your application and some of the metrics that you're, you see in the PPA to the narrative side. So just connecting the data with the narrative, recognizing that the data can only go so far. It can, it can highlight the sort of need, the future conditions, but really making that through line so it's not a disconnect. There's not a, a PPA data score and then a narrative that just sort of seems to be talking about two different things. You know, a competitive project would really try to you know, tie those two together into, into a sort of full holistic application. Great. Thank you. So continue to type your questions. We'll leave a few more moments for um, you to ask your questions about not only the PPA tool, but anything uh, funding round related for Garrett. Um, if you do have questions for Jose Luis, Jeannie, or Garrett, their email addresses are on the screen. But we do want to point you to the SACOG.org website. So if you go to SACOG.org, you can click the Regional Funding Programs tab at the top. Also, just want to let you know that all of the staff contact information for the entire funding round team is also available on the website. Um, this webinar has been recorded, and we will post it on the SACOG website for your review. Um, it will be helpful if you have any additional questions or need to go back through the demonstration, but feel free to reach out to any of the team at any time. So with that, we'll leave a few more moments uh, the webinar open for you to ask your final questions before we close out. Thank you everyone for participating today, and um, we'll have the webinar online in the next few days. Okay, everyone, thank you for participating today. Again, the webinar will be posted on the SACOG.org website. The contact information for the presenters today are on the screen. Um, we appreciate your participation. Look forward to a follow-up email soon, and thank you, and have a good day.